Amen. Uh, for those that are wondering why the beautiful cameras are set up, you're going to be on my Netflix special with all your beautiful faces. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, this actually, uh, I brought in the best of the best because my mother, she said, baby, I can't be there because I got a surgery that's coming up. And the doctor told me that I don't need to be traveling. But I will for you. I said, no, nah, mama, you don't have to do that. Don't be disobedient like you taught me. I said, I just get my guy, Mr. Vince, with all his luxury equipment to, to record it for you. And uh, by, his, by his kindness and his goodwill, he came here. And I literally, uh, if the sermon's a little short or it's not all put together, I preach last night until midnight and over and past. To the wee hours of the morning. He had me to test the audio and I got to reading the word of God and got to preach. And I said, man, I looked up, I said, man, it's after 12. <laughs> so we was here to about 12, 30, 1 o'clock last night setting up everything. And I, I just want to um, just thank the congregation. Uh, it's an honor to me to uh, be before you to proclaim God's word. It's not uh, anything that I take lightly. Uh, to be able to uh, proclaim God's word in his kingdom. There's no greater job. And I was telling someone yesterday that I worked so much for man, but when God, it is time to work for God, I'm always, here am I, send me. And I don't believe that I'm the best of the best. Actually, I believe that you, in my father's house, I'm the dumbest of the dumbest in my father's house. Uh, I got a twin brother, Zachariah Smith, and he's very, very uh, educated and a great and awesome preacher. I have an older brother that is, have more wisdom. His name is Solomon, has more wisdom than, than, than I can ever dream of. And so God did not bless me with uh, many talent. The only thing he blessed me with is, is a hard head and a soft behind that my mom hardened for me. And I, I want to take the time out to give honor to my parents as they are in the Lord. They raised us in the church uh, and they did everything they could to make sure that we knew the Lord. And I tell you, it's on the way this morning, I began to weep because I said, man, is I told my mom, it's amazing that. Through all the things, the whoopings, the talking, that I'm here today in God's kingdom. I, I told my mom and my dad, I, I talked to my dad about three hours yesterday. And man, he was just so proud when I told him that I would be speaking this morning from God's word. And he said, son, I just want to tell you, I'm so proud of you. He said, I don't care if you became a doctor. I don't care if you had the wealth of Bill Gates. I don't care if you became the greatest athlete. He said that the fact that you are a proclaimer or a preacher in God's kingdom, son, means the world to me. And, and I told my dad that, you know, my, my road in the faith hasn't been easy. And so when I read Second Chronicles, it means something to me because I'm a person that had fallen away from God and trying to find out, not falling away because I love the world, but I fell away because I really want to know who God was. And, and I just did not want to serve God on the basis of my parents' faith, but I wanted my own faith in God. And, and, and I began to fight, and I said, God, I want to know that you are real. I want to know, and I want to experience you like the Bible says. And so I, I said, Lord, I want to break away. I want to tear down the, my, my, my parents' faith, and I want to establish the faith that you want in me. Because a lot of time I find myself 
going to church because that's what my parents taught me to do. But I wasn't going because that's what God wanted me to do. And young people, I just want to tell you, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, the Bible said, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth because the difficult days are approaching. And young people, I just want to tell you, don't spend your, your youth being disobedient and living the ways of the world. Because you'll find yourself like me that has a lot of trials and, and tribulation and a, and a lot of things that you have to deal with as an adult because of the mistakes and the, and the bad decision that you've made in your youth. And don't, don't do that. Be like Timothy. Let no one despise thy youth. But proclaim your faith in God boldly and strongly among your peers and in your environment. A lot of times, young people, I just want to tell you that it may not work out for you like it did for me, that I was able to come back. Some people leave and never come back. And I want to encourage you this morning to never leave the presence of the Lord. I took it for granted when I was in my daughter's seats. I took it for granted when I was in your seats. I took it for granted that I was in the house of God and so many other kids and children never knew about the house of God. And I took it for granted. And now I'm, I'm disgusted and ashamed of myself because I didn't take advantage of God's word and being in his kingdom. And so now I humbly stand before you proclaiming that I am what I am because of the grace of God that have shined on my life. I just want to thank my, my beautiful wife. I would be remiss if I didn't thank her for uh, the love and the kindness and, and all the things that she had poured into me. Uh, I wouldn't be here if it, if it wasn't for her. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of my faith has been developed through her. She questioned me, is this what the Bible says? And it forced me to dig deeper in the word of God, I want to thank my two beautiful daughters uh, here that, that, that is with me. Uh, and they have taught me tremendously. I didn't know what my parents were talking about until I had kids. And now I told, told my mom and dad, I don't see how you put up with it. <laughs> I said, man, I don't see how you still alive. But, but I, I'm thankful that my kids taught me patient, but also they taught me a lot about the kingdom of God. Meet me at uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20. Beginning with the verse one. Second Chronicles chapter 20 begins with verse one. And we're just going to take a little expository uh, here uh, and learn some lesson about the power of prayer uh, here. What I discover is that the, that the word of God is deep, but yet it is shallow. The word of God is deep enough for scholars to dive in and never reach the bottom, but it's shallow enough for babies to swim in and never drown. Thank God. The Bible reads, and it happened after this. I got to stop. <laughs> because we're not going to understand anything until we know what is the this that he's talking about. He said, now it happened after this. What is the this? So we have to go back to chapter 19. And the this that he's talking about is that Jehoshaphat is king of Judah right now. And Jehoshaphat is a good king in the southern kingdom because we're right now we're in the divided kingdom. And a lot of the northern king of Israel were bad kings. And Jehoshaphat was a good king and Ahab the king of Israel was reigning at the same time that, uh, where we at right here. And Jehoshaphat, if you go back in chapter 19, uh, in, 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 in the uh, beginning of the verses, you begin to see that Jehoshaphat do something that made me scratch my head. I'm like, Jehoshaphat, what are you doing hanging out with Ahab, which is the most wickedest king next to Jeroboam? His wife Jezebel was horrible and wicked, and they did wickedly in the sight of the Lord. And, 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 and Jehoshaphat was in alignment with Ahab. 
and I'm a I'm not gonna preach that text, but sometimes you gotta be careful who you join yourself with because Jehoshaphat went out into battle with Ahab, and the people said, They go the king, we about to kill him. And Jehoshaphat said, Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> I ain't the king of Israel. <laughs> Lord help me. God said, You shouldn't even been with him anyway. So God delivered. Jehoshaphat, but God had some word for Jehoshaphat when he got back on home. He sent his prophets, the seer, and said, now, why are you hanging out with people that God hates? Why are you hanging out with that people? But he said something profound we're going to get into. But then Jehoshaphat did something profound we're going to discover later. And then Jehoshaphat said, okay, my bad, I repent. I'm going to get it together. So what Jehoshaphat began to do is set up judges over all the city in, uh, in Judah. And he began to go city by city and setting up judges in that city. And he began to restore the word of God in the city. He began to make sure that God's words were proclaimed in every city that he set up in his pr providence. And he began to set up the Levites, the chief priests, and he made them... Uh, uh, judges over civil, civil matter and spiritual matter as well. He began to set them up in order. Man, things are going good. Jehoshaphat said, man, I, I went and brought my people back that were serving the, the asteroids, the, the gods of, of this land. I went and got them from that and brought them back home. I, I, I restored things and things are going good. Guess what? When things are good, that, uh-oh, after this happened, what's about to happen? The Bible says in verse 1, it happened after this, the people of Moab with the people of Amnon and others with them besides the Amorites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. But I want you to look at the last verse uh, of 2 Chronicles chapter 19. Let's go to the last verse. It reads, and take notice, Amariah, the chief priest, is over you in all the matters of the Lord. And Zebediah, the son of uh, Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matter. Also, the Levites will be official before you. Watch this in the B clause. Watch what Jehoshaphat says in the B clause. He said, behave courageously and the Lord will be with you. Man, when I read this, I said, Man, you got to be careful what you say. You got to be careful what you say because God, as the young people say, I'm going to see you about that life. Now, you telling other people to be courageous in, in the face of fear. But God said, I'm going to see if you're going to be that way, Jehoshaphat. I'm going to see if you're going to be courageous when I bring that smoke on you. And, get, and guess what, preachers? Guess what, teachers? Can you preach what you practice or can you practice what you preach? And so Jehoshaphat, God loved testing our faith. And what God do to use to test our faith is through trials and other people and through enemies. And he used this situation to test Jehoshaphat and see how he will respond in this situation. So now all eyes is on Jehoshaphat. Now you told us to be courageous. What are you going to do? Let us keep reading. Verse 2. Then some came and jo told Jehoshaphat, saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. Now you got to know that that Israel was constantly warring against Syria. Syria was like a thorn in their side. They was always battling against Syria. So they always had beef, in other words. They was beefing back and forth with each other. And so, so now what happened is these, these people said, man, we can't beat them by ourselves, so we're going to uh, uh, join together their strength in numbers. So they, they, they got a pact together and said, we're going to go see Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. We're going we're gonna to take him. So he said... They from Syria, they are in Hazan Tamar, which is uh, Eden uh, Gedi. I always think of Star Wars. I'm sorry. I always think of the Jedi. I, I, every time I be want to read it, Jedi is Gedi. But it, I needed to say, verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared 
And this word fear here means that he was scared. He was afraid. And notice what he said. And he set himself to seek the Lord. Man, this will preach all by itself. I want you to see something. Why this is so important. Let me subscribe. Let me let me say this. What's in you will come out of you when the fire is turned up. So in other words, God was showing that when I put the fire on Jehoshaphat, I'm going to show you and reveal what comes out of him. And when the fire was turned up, he said the first thing he did. Yeah, he was afraid. That's a human experience. But in the midst of that fear, you need to have courageous or you can be brave. So you need to overcome that fear with what? He set himself to seek the Lord. Now, why do I say that what's in him will come out of him? Go back to chapter 19, verse 11. It tells us that, that when he came back, the prophet told him, it said, God, the prophet said, Jehoshaphat, there's some good in you. That there's some good in you. Even though you didn't do this, this, this right, but there's some good in you. And so let me read that. The Bible says, I'm sorry, 19 verse 3. Uh, Second Chronicles 19 verse 3 it says, Nevertheless, good things are found in you that you have removed the wooden image from the land and have prepared, past tense, your heart to seek the Lord. So in other words, Jehoshaphat wasn't doing this on the fly. He had already purpose in his heart that I'm going to serve God. That he had already made up his mind that God is going to be my maker and my creator. Jehoshaphat said he predetermined that as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. And so when he get to some situations, when he get to some trials, guess what happened? The first day he do after he feared, he, he seek the Lord. Oh, my God. Let me let me tell you how big I don't even have to preach any anymore. Just that alone. Matthew 6, All these other things will be added unto you like it's there in the scriptures. God makes us promises and then he fulfilled those promises over and over and over again. Now, it's amazing to me that Jehoshaphat is dealing with a dilemma. In the presence of sickness, in the presence of adversity, in the presence of your enemies, the Lord is at hand. In the presence of dealing with loved ones that is sick, the Lord is at hand. In the presence of a loved one laying down in the casket dead, the Lord is at hand. I need for you guys to subscribe that in your brain to say in every situation, the Lord is at hand. And the problem is, is that when we begin to focus more on the problem than the problem solver, then what happens? We get mad. We get sad. We get depressed because we spend more of our power and energy focused on not the presence of God. All, every, I can cure a lot of these mental diseases with the word of God. You know why you have anxiety? Uh, 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 is you worrying about tomorrow? God said, you ain't got to worry about tomorrow. You ain't got to worry about the next day because you don't even know it's that promise to you. So you wasted all of today's energy worrying about tomorrow's problem that may not or may come. But God says, stay in the present. Some of you guys are depressed because you're so worried about what you did in the past. And Paul said, leave that thing behind and deal with right now. The Lord is at hand right now. And how do we summon God's presence? How do we do that? Let us continue to read. The Bible says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord 
and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. Sub point. It's very important, ladies, who you let lead your household. It's very, the, the person that leads you has an effect on your household. See, let me give you a, a nugget. Men, before you can be in authority, you must be under the authority of Jesus Christ. And ladies, if a man is not under the authority of Jesus, <laughs> you need to leave him alone. Because he's going to be ruling all over the place. But when he submitted under the authority of Christ, oh, this is what happened. See, when you got a man that leading right, and you're going to see the men was leading. The men brought their families. The men brought their wives and their kids and said, you, you get your butt down here. You're going to fast too. You're going to pray too. You're going to seek the Lord too. This is why it's important, ladies, congregation, churches, it's important who you allow to lead over the congregation. Because whoever you set over the congregation can lead astray. That's what happened with the king of Judas. That, that's what happened in the, in the king of Israel. When they had bad kings, what did the people do? They did bad things. When they had good kings, the people did good things. So it's very important that you choose wisely who lead over you. Verse 5. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers. Now this is his prayer. So now we get into the prayer. Jehoshaphat said, look, we got a fast. We about to go into to prayer. We, we about to go on knee station. We about to get down on our knees and we about to beg. You know, I mean, they got a song, but you know. Uh, but anyway. Prayer was a tool that Jehoshaphat used to bring the presence of God down among the midst of them. Whew. Whew. I don't think, I, when I read this, I can't be still and I can't be quiet when I read this because this story means something to me. I don't know if you understand that when you have been in places and you've been down and you, you've been struggling you, and you just said, man. Lord, help me. See, I know some of you may, may not have lived a, a, a prodigal son lifestyle, but I have before. And I tell you that the way of the world is not easy. The Bible said the way of the transgressor is hard. It's hard in that world. They don't love you. They don't, they don't, they don't care about you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. If you think about choosing the world of God, I can tell you right now, you ain't got to do it because I already done it for you and I already know what the outcome is going to be. So be wise to learn from other people's mistakes. Watch this. Listen to Jehoshaphat's prayer. O oh Lord God of our Father, are you not God in heaven and do you not rule over the kingdoms of, 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 of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you. Are you not God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or family, we will stand before this temple and in the presence for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save. And now, and now, man, I tell you, pay attention to the small letter words. See, I'm a, I'm a little undereducated, so I pay attention to the one letter, two letter, and three letter, and four letter words. Those are the words that I can pronounce for those that don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> So when it get it over, if it get over four four letter words, is you know I start to stumble a little bit. So when you see that three letter word now, when you start to see the word but, then you start to see the word I, you start to you see my and these small letter words. Pay close attention. We miss over 
the small things, but it's the small things that God is going to use to confound what we think is great. So watch this. He said, we will stand before your temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. Ooh, that's confidence. And now, here are the people of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you will not let Israel invade. When they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. You know what he's saying here? He's saying, God, we are in this position because you told them not to destroy them. And now they are here trying to destroy us. What are you going to do? <laughs> That's how that, this is how this conversation is going. But what Jehoshaphat is saying, Lord, your word, you said, your word said, do not invade them. And so, God, I am being obedient to you because Jehoshaphat, for one, he didn't have the strength to fight against them. But at the, also, he's like, God never told me to go fight them. So before I go put my hand on somebody that God never gave me the authorization to do, I need to check with him and let him handle the situation. Because God specifically told him, don't, don't mess with them. So now Jehoshaphat said, it's in your hand because this is your decree. Man, so, sometimes you got to say, God, you handled it. This is your problem, not mine. This, this is a God problem. This ain't my problem. And we're going to see that to be true later in the text. It says... You will not let Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from look, we they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. It. Our oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming up against us, nor do we know what to do. But that conjunction, I love the conjunction. I'm going to do a lesson about conjunctions in the Bible. And when you understand conjunction, you understand the Bible a whole lot better. But it's a contrast conjunction. That means that it transitioned to what just was said to a different thought. So what he's saying is our eyes is on you in spite of not knowing what to do. The only thing to do is to look at you. <laughs> That's it. Man, oh man, it's getting good. I, I don't know if y'all enjoying this as good as I am, but I appreciate it, brother. Verse 13. Ooh, now. I, I'm telling you these three letter words. Now. This is where it get good. Now. All Judah with their little ones, their wives, and their children stood before the Lord. So how did I come to the conclusion that the men brung their family because only men had wives? <laughs> I mean, I mean did we, did we ain't living in our time. <laughs> at that time, they didn't do all this same gender, you know, marriage and all changing sex. They ain't had that then. A man was a man and a woman was a woman. A man married a, a woman and a woman married a man. So that's how I know that the men took their family to stand before the Lord. Men never, never be ashamed to demand that your family stand before God. I thought the ladies would have, you know. <laughs> All right. Ooh, then, the now and the then, now God's spirit is moving. You know why God's spirit is moving? Because Jehoshaphat invoked God's word on God. He used God's word on God. 
And anytime you use God's word on God, God moves immediately. You would never find a place in the Bible where when you use God's word that he did not respond immediately. He always respond to his word. Guess what he said? He said, I, we, our life is like the flower of grass. It fades away. It withers. But the word of our Lord lives forever. It endures forever. This is the word by which we preach. The word is what saves us. It's going to be here Throughout eternity is God's word. God said, my word do not return to me void. So in other words, when I give a word, it's already done. So look, God's spirit moved through his prophet and through the priest. And then he said, look, God said, all right, I got something to say. Listen up. Verse 15. The prophet said, and he said, listen, all of you. Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you king Jehoshaphat, exclamation mark. So in other words, the emphasis in the text is on Jehoshaphat, because if you know anything about an exclamation mark, the word prior to that should be emphasized louder. The emphasis is on Jehoshaphat. In other words, God is saying, I heard what you said. Yeah, I, 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 I received that message. And guess what God said? Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Say with me, but God. <laughs> yes, sir. If y'all can, if y'all can just add that to your vocabulary in every situation, but God. Man, you it, it'll make life so much better. Because you understand that the presence of God is at hand. Watch what he said. Tomorrow go down against them, for they will surely come up by the ascent of Zig, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jezreel. You would not need to fight in this battle. Praise God. But I need for you to do some things. See, God, when he give a promise, he always attach it to a principle. See, God don't give just empty promises. There's a principle that needs to be applied in order to experience the promise. We like to ride in on the promises of God, but violate his principle. And it don't work. Like the, it don't work that way with God. You have to apply the principle in order to experience the promise. Help me in here. So what's the what's the principle? Position yourself, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Drop down to verse 20 because of time. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa, and they went out. Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Ju Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of the holiness as they went before the army and, and were saying, praise the Lord. For his mercy endures forever. What I tell you about the three letter words, verse 22, what it say? Now. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, when you, when you pay attention to these three letter words, you go, you'll be like, woo, this power. Now, now, when they begin to sing and to praise, the Lord moved. When we begin to worship, God moves. When we set our face and our heart to seek the Lord, God moves. 
See, God don't move unless his word is in the midst. So why you know why we worship? Because the word said so. You know why we do what we do on Sunday? Because the word said so. Because when we're acting in God's word, God is moving. God said, I'm going to move among you. When you got my word in the midst of you, I'm there. My presence is here. So as long as you abide in his word and his word abide in you, whoo. I don't even know why a Christian could even say a Christian and depressed in the same sentence. Because I, I'm going to be honest with you. To know, that the, to know that I got the power of this, this is an example of what God did for his child. And I'm his child. So that means that if God did it for him, then that means that surely God got the capacity to do it on me. Unless, if the conjunction is I'm abiding by his word. So let's get to it. The Lord set an ambush against the people of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come up against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Amnon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Verse 24, so when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude and they were and, and there were dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. And watch this. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoils because there was so much. Woo. Man, I don't see how y'all can sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I, do you see what God did? God has said, I know you ain't not ask me, but I'm going to be like, I'm, a, I'm, from, I'm from Louisiana. I'm going to give you a little land gap. For those that don't know about Louisiana, that's a little extra. God said, you ain't even asked me about all the spoil, but I'm going to get that anyway because I'm the God and I don't just do anything ordinary. Even when I made you, you were extraordinary. You are nothing like the beasts of the field. Nothing on earth compared to who you are. I don't do anything regular. God ain't regular, people. And I do a sermon to show you that Jesus wasn't regular either when he was on this earth. But I digress. Let's get to the text so we can be out of here because I know everybody want to go see some football. <laughs> but y'all ain't let me get up here till like 11.45, 11.50, so, you know. <laughs> I see what Brother Bell was talking about now. At first, I couldn't sympathize with it, but then I looked at the top and said, oh, man, I was trying to have him out here like 12 o'clock, but, you know. But anyway, I want you to see this, and, and I'm going to conclude. It said, then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them rejoice over the enemy. I don't think y'all got it. They started with fear, but they ended with joy. <laughs> but you remember what I said? God always do a little extra. I want you to see something. Verse 29. Watch this. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest all the way around. See, I started crying, but I ended up joyful. <laughs> That's what that word will do to you. I don't think you understand what the text is saying. See, God said, you cause my children to fear. I'm going to cause you to fear. The very thing that they try to give to the children of Israel, God gave them a dose of that and put fear among everybody about his children. God will die by his kids. God don't play about his kids. So if you know that you got this type of power with this deity, 
that he is able to do this type of thing via prayer. What are we down about? What are we timid about? That's why Jehoshaphat can come to God boldly like that. You said this. You did that. You said this. He was bold with it. Ooh. Let me conclude. Second Chronicles chapter seven in my conclusion. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the writer conclude it for me. Watch the conjunctions in the text. Second Chronicles chapter seven verse uh, uh, fourteen. The Bible says, if that's a possibility, my people, that's personal, which are called by my name, that's paternal, shall humble themselves, that's preparation, and pray, that's power, and seek my face, that's a privilege, turn from their wicked ways, that's procedure, then I will hear from heaven, that's progress, and I will forgive them of their sin, that's pardon and heal their land that's prosperity. Praise God. Let me give you this. <laughs> Let me give you this. Let me give you this. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now, remember that word? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Wait a minute. What do that word substance mean? The word sub is a substance is a two part word is a compound word. Sub means under stints means stand. That means that faith is something that we stand up on. What are we standing up on? It's the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what he's saying is faith is something that we stand up on. It's up. It's up on us. There was two people. A man that believed in science and a man that believed in, in God. He had faith in God. And science said, look here, look here, faith. We want to test some theories today. I want to see who's right. He said, I want to take you to some things and explain some things to you more accurately since you like to believe in things that you can't, ain't, can't see, Brother Mel. Faith said, all right, science, go ahead. Science said, look, he took him to a valley. And it was a bunch of plants. He said, I can name every plant in this valley. He said, I can show you the, the which plant the bee get his honey from. And he just faith said, all right, all right, sir. Then he took him to some trees. He said, I can name every tree in this forest. That's an oak tree. That's a willow tree. That's a cypress tree. And faith said, okay. And he took him to a bed of rocks and he said, See, I can tell you the age of every rock here. He said, look at this. This is like 30 million years old. This is, this is 10,000 years old. And, and he began to go, and, and science took faith and kept walking. They got to a body of water. And as they were walking, science stopped at the edge of the water and said, whoa. And faith nudged them in the back. He said, go on, science. Keep going. He said, I can't. There ain't a bridge here that I can walk across water then. Faith said, all right, son, now this is where I take over. You like to believe in what you can't see, and I'm going to show you what you can believe in that you can't see. He, so he took him back. He said, let's digress. Since you took me to, to the field, I'm going to take you back. So he took him back to the field. He said, I see your name, every plant, but you forgot about two. He said, I, you forgot about the rose of Sherry and the lily of the valley. And he said, he said, come on, science, keep up. And so he took him back to the tree. He said, I see you name every tree, but you forgot about one tree. You forgot about the tree of life. And he said, come on, science, keep up. And he took him to the bed of rocks. And he said, I see that you name every rock in the bed, but you forgot about rock, one rock. And, and science said, what rock is that? He said, you forgot about the rock of ages. And he said, oh, my, my, he got happy. And then he got to the bottom of water and he started walking out on the water. And science said, "Woo, faith, how you doing that? And faith, as he began to walk on the water, he said, faith began to quote the song that we always sing. He said, my faith, he said, my hope is built 
on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. And he just kept walking. And he said, on all other ground, it's sinking. He said, I said, ooh, faith. Faith got back on the land. He was, he was shouting, and signs got happy. He started to shout with him. Sign so said, man, how did you do that, Faith? He said, Sign, you believe in what you can see, but I believe in what I can't see. But what you didn't understand, the word of God was underneath me as I was walking on the water. You couldn't see it, but it was there. And, and Sign said, man, I want that. Give me that faith, faith. Give me that. And, and faith said, settle down. Settle down. He said, if you want this, there's a formula to this. He said, there's a process to this. There's a procedure to this. And then faith walked him on over. He said, see, you got to hear plus believe plus repent plus confess plus believe and you'll receive. And signs, look, he said, man, you're going to have to give me a little bit more than that. He said, all right. He said, that's fine. He said, turn to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. He said, unto one believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. He said, go back to that four-letter words I've been teaching you about. The four-letter words are important. What do the word unto mean? It means that you ain't into. <laughs> that means you're close, but you don't have it yet. So he said that puts you close to it, but it didn't put you into it. And then he goes on to tell him Romans 10, 17, the same verse. He said, all those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said, well, then it says that believe and confess. He said, I don't see nothing else. He said, it's a formula. He said, see, it explains itself. He said, one believes unto. That means that, that that's a portion of the equation, but there's some, some others. He said, Romans 10, 17, that's the here. Romans 10, 9 and 10, that's the believe in the confession. He said, well, I did. He said, he said well, where you get the repentance and baptism? He said, Acts 2, 38. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. See, repentance puts you unto, but baptism puts you into. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27, for as you, as many of you, as were baptized into Christ, have put them on. But it get better. He was like, he was like, the reason why Romans 10 did introduce baptism and repentance because he was talking to the Jewish leaders. See, they didn't believe in Christ, but they did, they did believe in the word. So they knew all about baptism because they would understand John baptism. But Paul had already covered baptism in chapter six. So he took them to chapter six and, and, and lo and behold, I said, I said, oh, faith teaching. I said, man, that man teaching in here. Man, look what Romans chapter six, verse three says. It's right before us. Look at the words, the four letter words. It says, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Boy, and and, and science said, oh, boy, you're making a lot of sense. He said, you're making sense. So he said, let me get this right. He said, so. So if we are in Christ, that means that we got righteousness, justification, and salvation. I said, you got it. You got it, brother. He said, where the water at? <laughs> and, and on that day, signs is recorded as going down in the watery grave and being baptized into Christ. And he became a new creature, divorcing and denouncing his ideology in science. If anyone's subject to the invitation, why don't you come and stand what we're saying?